Well, hey there, and welcome back to Travels with Jordy. Yet again, we are working on MB Zephyrus. <laughs> And we've got most of the overheads up. I didn't shoot much of it because we were going fast. Uh, it doesn't really take that long. Uh, it's fairly, fairly straightforward. One of the huge advantages of MV Zephyrus is that the um, deck beams, the beams that hold up the roof, which is really the deck, were already curved to that perfect curve. So I didn't have to do that trick I had to do on my boat with the battens and slats and all that. Anyway, went really well. The aft cabin is already 99% done. All that's left to do is just these two triangle pieces up at the front. And if you look at them carefully, you realize they're a compound curve and they're going to be a little complex. So I've cut them into two. Uh, the previous overheads have been cut into all the individual pieces, but I don't think it has to be cut up into pieces that small. I think I can do it in two pieces with a little judicious bending, trimming, pushing, adjusting. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing now. Um, this wire is for a future um, light here, basically a chart light. It'll be one of those uh, red or white lights, basically. So that's your underway light while you're working. And uh, radio over there, which will be reinstalled up top. Uh, I didn't cut the hole perfectly for the spotlight, uh, but I can fix that quite easily because the extraction. Isn't that a crazy word? Extraction? Where's the extraction? Here. Extraction, extraction. I've never known how to pronounce it properly. Trim ring. Anyway, so let's get this stuff done. Um, get some more wires working. Get some more stuff connected. Keep moving. That's the basic thing. Cheers. The trickiest bit with this particular piece is this little uh, scribe around this um, timber uh, because there's not going to be any trim that covers that. Basically, all the way along here, there's a little trim piece up here one along the front, but this little section here has to sort of stand on its own, as you might say. So I'm just trimming that out. I started, whoop, I'm not straight here. I started doing it with a knife and I've decided it's time to pull out the Dremel because that will do a perfect job of doing this little. Well, let's see how that fits. Okay, so that fits close enough for me. Um, we're going to be using a schwack of these tiny little LED uh, puck lights, pot lights, I don't know what you want to call them. They're tiny little, they're actually landscape lights. Um, they're designed to go into staircases and stone walls and things like that. Anyway, I love these things. Um, they have a nice warm light, nice stainless steel bezel, completely waterproof. Um, even the connectors are theoretically waterproof. They're not quite marine grade waterproof, but anyway, Amazon, eh, they come out at about eight to 10 bucks each. Now the ones I put on my boat are a little bit bigger. Um, but on, uh, on Zephyrus here, we're going with some smaller ones. We're going to put them all the way along the top, mostly on the sides, the same way I did it on my boat. Uh, there's going to be one, two, three across the front here over the console. And I've just marked off for that. Uh, gotta make a hole. Uh, can't risk drilling in masonite with just anything because it'll grab the paper plastic i don't know what the white section is and just tear it and you'll have a bloody mess and you don't have much of a flange to hide it so hole saw is the way to go but it's really small so you need a really small hole saw this is a 5 8 hole saw which goes on the small type arbor uh, i had to buy both because i couldn't find my small arbor and i didn't have a 5 8 uh, hole saw um, you see a problem right off the bat the drill is not longer than the hole saw. So uh, unless I can reset that in here, now uh, that's going to give me a problem. Uh, 5 8 hole saw is the second smallest you can get. There are 9 16 I've had one before. I couldn't find one for this project. 5 8 will do. So I've got to somehow deal with that because there's no way I can chuck that up in the drill and punch that right through that dot because that's going to walk all over the place. So I've got to extend the drill here somehow. And there's no sense you watching that. Okay, found the right Allen key after first finding the glasses so I could see what I was doing. And we'll spin this baby back on in here and have a delightful extension on the actual pilot drill so we can safely do this, relatively safely do this. Um, sometimes you'll hear me describing uh, having put equity into a piece of material. Well, there's a fair amount of equity in this. In some ways, I should have drilled the hole earlier because the hole is the thing that could screw it up if I'm not careful. The other thing is I gotta make sure I don't screw up the console by drilling a hole through it here. 
So, this seems relatively mundane, but as I said, drilling in masonite, white masonite, can cause trouble. So what I want to do now is remove all this swarf, because that will ball up under the teeth and make a mess, potentially. Let's see how we did. You see, not perfect, but clean enough for this little sweetheart with that much of a flange. Okay, we gotta make one for the other side. Well, with those two pieces up, uh, they're only temporarily tacked. Uh, that's why they're not, you know, properly aligned here yet. Um, because I have to bring it down to do the wiring and decide exactly how I'm going to do that because they're going to be integrated with the lighting that's in these strips along the side. Uh, they're going to look a lot like, well, they're going to look a lot like that one, which is actually one of the ones from my boat, which I'm refinishing. So I'm going to take some more of this beautiful 3 inch by 3 eighths uh, Sapelli mahogany and uh, make some more strips that go along here. Happily, it's just over eight feet. I mean, just under eight feet. The wood is just long enough because it's actually just over eight feet to make that strip that up perfectly. Um, looking forward to this. Again, I don't have a ton of this wood. It's also incredibly expensive, especially to have it uh, milled up to this size. So I got to get this right the first time. So moment of concentration. Concentration now. Tell you, turning around an eight foot piece of wood in this boat requires a little well, you gotta have lots of windows. Out that window, out that window, and out there. Okay, let's cut a little bit off the edge of this. So that's my standard uh, circular saw or table saw trimming technique. Um, definitely requires safety glasses. So I'll see how this fits. There go. Oh, it's pretty close. All right. More holes in cheap wood. The trick is not to damage the surface of this white stuff. So these holes are for some really cute little LED uh, adjustable, if I can make them adjust the right way. Uh, uh, why can't I make this one move? How about I make this one move? There we go. That one rocks back and forth. Uh, these are going to be the reading lamps that are going to go right here above the bed. Really like them. They give off the nicest warm light I've ever seen of any LED. Uh, not quite as cheap. All right, so they just pop right in there. I'm not going to put one in now because I got to put a switch in as well. The switch I'm using is going to be a bit rudimentary, basically just a toggle switch and not an incredibly expensive one at that. However, they're going to be easy to replace uh, should that be the case required and uh, I think they'll work just fine. The idea of reaching, you just reach up, turn the switch light on and off. Okay, drill some more holes. Now this is hairy too. Uh, for this hole I'm going to use hmm, a brad point bit. I don't know if you can see this. Basically it looks like a drill but instead of a drill that just has a V point on top. I don't know if you can see that. This one has a point in the middle and cutters on both sides. These are both half inch drills. This will make an absolute freaking mess of that white masonite. This will cut a super clean hole. Look after these things. They're golden. All right, let's chuck it up and drill some holes. Now let's see how well it turned out. It's terrifying. Well, I mean, it's not real pretty, but it's not bad. That'll do. There's some tear out at the back, but I can deal with that. Okay, last one. Now I could reduce the tear out by stopping after the point's gone through a bit and then cutting from the other direction, but it's not that crucial for this particular project. I'm uh, putting both a backer, stainless steel washer, and a washer up front as well. Uh, this has a couple of things. It, of course, makes it much stiffer in the hole. It also allows me to tighten this nut with a wrench or something without destroying the surface of this. And I think it looks, I don't know, just a little more, no, maybe it's not great. I don't know. Anyway, so this is what it'll look like with the puck. Now, I should make sure that this is going to rotate in the direction I want it to. Uh, that's front to back. Okay. It's actually designed to go into its own little aluminum housing. 
There we go. Nice. Yeah, it's meant to go into this snazzy little housing uh, where it fits quite nicely. But I don't want to use the housing because I don't need to. Oop. Well, good thing I don't need it anyway. So there's the next one. So come on, that's not so bad, right? That's not so bad. It's not great. Anyway, it'll do. There we go. Nice and tight and properly aligned. I think that looks pretty jazzy. Okay, let's wire it up. Butt connector for a spade. Here we go. Come on. Riveting, isn't it? So I don't know if you can actually see everything I've just been doing. Uh, that is now an absolutely watertight and permanent connection. Now, it's funny. I'm not sure that's ABYC, American Boating and Yacht Council approved for marine electrical, which is interesting because in two months from now, I'll be getting my ABYC marine certification. So perhaps I better not publish this video until I've got it. Yeah. Anyway, if you're watching ABYC, I did the rest of the boat perfectly, really I did. Hmm, gotta move you around. Temporarily attached. Oh yeah, oh yeah, loving it, loving it. Doesn't look like much in this light, but these are really, really nice lights. Put the same one in, in the Airstream and they were just fantastic. Okay, gotta put this thing up. Okay, so listen, I won't go on about it too much in here. Um, I'm in the head doing the lighting, about to do this terminal strip up here. But I'm getting started with by reusing uh, this old porcelain light switch and I adore these old switches. They're really nicely made. I don't know if you can see the little brass block in there um, and it's uh, tapped out for a screw to tighten on the wire. So basically I just ran the wire down this old chase that had been on here and uh, I can pull that right back up and into place and uh, that's basically as good as new. Put a few screws in there and put the cap back on. I'll show you how that works later. Okay, just gonna wire this up. This just gets three uh, tiny little lead uh, puck lights. One in the shower, one over my head, and one over the toilet. It's a little crowded in here for video. Oy. So once they're wired up, basically it just gets this little brass cover. Uh, make sure I don't strip it here, cross thread it. Uh, anyway, I just love these switches. Uh, this one is original to this boat and uh, I'm gonna get all switches like this from my boat. I just adore them. I can uh, find them in Australia. In fact, I couldn't find them anywhere in North America. Uh, you'd think they'd make them, but they make them in Australia brand new and I can bring them in for, well, reasonable. Anyway, let's keep wearing. The little pucks I'm gonna use in the bathroom. I, I love these. These are also off Amazon. They're machined aluminum. Um, you can take the bezel off and the little diffuser and the, you can see the printed circuit for the, um, the um, LEDs, but also the holes to screw it up to a ceiling, uh, which works out really well. It's micro thin, super easy to manage. I just love these little, and the light is really nice and warm. Um, the wire can either go sideways, say across the top of a panel, or it can be folded up. I won't do it too many times. Uh, so it can go through a hole, which leaves a tiny little divot at the edge. But if you put that away from you, you can't see that all. And these are going to be just perfect. So three of these going in the bathroom. Let's get them in. What I'm doing is putting some finish on all the little wood strips that go up here. And uh, the pot lights sit in. If you see two different sizes of holes, it's because these two pieces are for my boat. And uh, I never finished refinishing them, so it's time to get them done too. Anyway, um... I want to talk about a finished product. As you know, I'm a big fan of tongue oil, and yes, I would have used tongue oil on these, except it would take many, many coats and the ability to recoat over time. But with the little puck lights in here and up against the white headliner, that would be difficult. So I'm actually cheating. Base coat of oil, and then I'm using a product I kind of really like. It's called Minwax Wipe On Poly. It's a polyurethane, it is. Um, so it's a plastic, uh, but the neat thing about it is that it's formulated, it's thin enough, whatever, in such a way that you just wipe it on with a cloth. So it looks like oil. What you're looking at here is actually that material. And it takes a few coats still, no doubt, but it dries in a few hours, especially in this warm, windy, dry air. And it's done. It looks 90% as close as tongue oil, and I never have to touch it again. Ugh. 
something to be said about that. Anyway, I'm not endorsing the product. I don't endorse products, but if this is available where you are and you have a similar need, it's pretty cool stuff. Okay, let's put some on. So one of the most forgiving things about this stuff is it's really dust tolerant. And what I mean by that is because it's a wipe on oil, I need lots on here for the start. I'm gonna soak this cloth a bit. Is that, um, again, it's practically acting as a tack cloth. Because you're wiping it on, um, you pick up any dust that's on the surface um, relatively easily into your cloth. Um, and I mean that, again, being really very tolerant of uh, my kind of slap dap attitude about finishes, I, uh, I find that very, very convenient. So there you go. Wipe down, just a quick little wipe down, and that has a coat on it. Let's do some more. The first coat, I put a coat on the back as well, uh, because I find that this Sapelli is not very humidity stable. Uh, I haven't actually done any research to confirm that. Uh, I only say that because I've had a couple little problems with it. And uh, it's beautiful wood, but it is not teak, I'll tell you that. Ooh, 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 doesn't that look nice? Awesome. Okay, and in a few minutes, I'm probably finish to a whole lot of stuff. So I'm setting up the lighting strips that are going to go up here out of this nice piece of spell of mahogany. You've seen me put that together before. Let's get you looking at the actual piece of work. And uh, I'm just tossing in these little puck lights. I think I've showed you these before too. Again, not exactly marine, but they are technically waterproof. They're landscape lights, so they can't be too, too bad. And uh, get another one in here. Um, Again, I put these same lights in my boat, bigger ones, and I just love the way they look, just cascading a little light down across here, and that'll be just the ticket. Again, if you can see the finish on here, this is that um, wipe on poly, and I have to say, god damn it, that is, gosh damn it, gall darn it, that is an awesome finish for something that is so easy to use. Uh, we'll see what kind of longevity it has, but it is polyurethane, it can't be that bad. Anyway, so this just gets popped up. Um, there's a bit to it because what I have to do as I pop it up against here, the side of the boat, of course, is curved. So when I put it up, I have to flex it into the curve by pushing on it. And to make it even more complicated, I'm leaving a half inch gap against the um, this member here, which I wish I knew what it was called, uh, so that for ventilation. Let's see if all these lights go on. Oh, gorgeous evening. Okay, looking straight into the sun, a little harder to see what I'm doing here. Yeah! I don't know if you guys can see that, but they all just went on. Okay, a few more screws, and then tuck some wires up, and this is done. Thanks for your patience.